Ali, this is Justice, Society of All Stars 7. This is the other Justice Society of Superheroes book that came out alongside that one that I reviewed. This issue is concerned with the unfair death of Pratt's son in another book. I really de hate it when characters die in books by creative teams who are not writing the character. Like a writer kills off another writer's character. Like imagine if you were writing a book and you were writing your favourite character. And then John Jeffries just kills him off in his little crossover because pointless teenager death is all he can do to make his stories have stakes. This book is written by Lady Sturges, although this was back when she was Man Sturges, but we should not dead name her like that. She is a lady now, and this is... Is this our first trans creator on this channel? That seems incredibly bad for us. There's been like 700 videos, and we're only just now getting to our first trans creator. It makes it seem like we didn't like them trans lot around these parts. My advice for trans creators would be do better comics and maybe I would have more reason to buy them. And on that front, this issue is pretty, pretty good. Like Jerry Davis would say in Club Your Euphemisms. I love that show. What you talking about, Davis? Classic. This comic is good, even though rather than focusing on Pratt's son, it focuses on Judo Woman, and she is easily the character on this team that I dislike the most. We are seeing her grief after Pratt's son's death, and apparently they were dating, which I didn't know. I was always less interested in this book because it had fewer characters that I was drawn to and the one that I probably liked the best, he was dead by issue 7. The turnout to Pratt's son's funeral is half nice and half annoying. We have got just about all his Justice Society of Superheroes teammates barring Stephen Orkman and Dr. Fates. We've got some of his teammates from Tiny Titans. And very pleasing is we have a whole bunch of supporting characters from his solo series who hadn't really shown up since. And if you care, the two missing heroes that bother me the most are Green Lantern's Kyle Reese and Rayman. Uh, the art is by Fred Letter Media, by the way, and it is decent. All this story is showing how Judo Woman copes and deals with her loss. Our here, we have a scene with her and Cycle Clone. Just what I want, a scene between two characters who originate in Tragic Kingdom. Our ear, she is taking out her anger on a bunch of street hoods. And then Sandman makes an appearance. Although he was also at the funeral. I am very happy to see him show up. This is Sandy Hawkins. And he has got a recording of Pratt's son. That is like his last will and testament. He recorded it before he died because Sandman had a nightmare that Pratt's son was gunning to die and told him. So now we have a post-mortem attempt to provide some resolution to this dead boy. We get a recap of some of Pratt's son's life. And down here we have a bit about Zero Hours, Christmas in Time and how the Spectre used Pratt's son to create a new Big Bang. They say that I saved the universe. But just between you and me, I did not even know what was happening. 
That issue of Zero Hours is probably the most enjoyable comic I have read this year. Only two months left if someone wants to try and top it. We get a bit about how Yellow Flask messed up his face and how it made him angry until he met Judo Woman. I have not seen any of this relationship play out, so I didn't know. But it seems like they are overselling what happened. I have doubts that these characters develop this level of intimate relationship over the space of like 10 issues or whatever. So Judo Woman, she is hunting down the gangsters who killed her father. Since she cannot avenge Pratt's son, she's trying to avenge her father. And here is my criticism of this issue. We have this man-boy person in a two-piece suit show up. And I didn't know who this is. They didn't offer a name for him. I didn't know who this is meant to be. I didn't know if it's someone from Judo Woman's history, or if it's meant to be a specific DC character or whatever. He shows up to urge Judo Woman not to throw everything away by killing the gangsters because she didn't finish watching the video of Pratt's son, who goes on to tell her not to throw her life away in anger the way that he had. And then he shows his face and it turns out his scars are very minor, which contradicts the issue where we saw some of his face and the whole thing was scarred and burnt. He does say that he had spoken to Captain Midnight about having some skin grafts and cosmetic surgery. So maybe he has already had some. So Judo Woman and... Opera Soup Man, they beat up the mob stars, and it's not anger to beat them up, it is resolution. And we close things off with the rest of the funeral as Judo Woman bids farewell to Pratt's son, and our AP Lodge, our first of two AP Lodges, is Judo Woman. She has gone to Atlanta to try and redeem Pratt's son's name by paying off the medical bills for the still hospitalised victims of when Pratt's son did a big explosion. Then our second AP Lodge means little to me, since it is setting up a body or continuing the setup of a body, and I didn't have any other issues of this series, so I can't really invest myself much in this strand. Speaking of things I didn't bother to care about, we have a second feature which is a story starring Minuteman and Flask Girl and I didn't read this and that sounds horrible but I will stress that the reason I didn't read it was because this is part 6 of a story so even if I had read it I would either be lost or not get much out of it. I think it is to the credit of a writer, and it shows a good writer, if you can tell a story about a character that I personally didn't have the time for, Judo Woman. And you can tell a story that not only holds me attention, but it doesn't bore or annoy me. I think this is well done. I'm not really a bigger Judo Woman fan because of it, but... I didn't in any way find it a chore to read. It's also the most closure to Pratt's son we can get, so that is a lot more satisfying than him just dropping dead in a quick scene. I still think killing Pratt's son off was crappy, but I will give this seven thumbs up.